So getting into match one here, winning the Dyra, that's a good start. We're up against Respect the Cat. Not versus Respect the Cat before. They are on a Urian deck. My my main guess would be it is the Saheli combo deck with things like Teferi, um, Utopia Sprawl, and Ice Fang Quaddle and all of that. I'm going to keep this one. I think uh, Cut Draw from Invisible Stalker should be high enough on its own here. The only downside to this would be if my opponent... Uh, Force of Negations, the Curious Obsession. But yeah, definitely like a pretty high upside hand here to keep. If we keep the Core Spirit Dancer hand, our opponent can just bounce the Core Spirit Dancer with Teferi, Time Raveler. Um, then we're just sad. Alright, so Giver of Runes. What does that mean? What does that mean? I'm super confused now. Alright, Stalker down and pass. Can't think of too many, like, Yorian decks playing Giver of Runes. It seems a bit off. Thalia, so it's just a Hate Bears deck. It's an 80 cars Hate, hate Bears deck. Okay. Curious Obsession down, Unblockable Creature, attack. Look to draw some stuff. Probably get blown out by uh, Skyclave Apparition. Although maybe not, because our opponent doesn't... is on 80 cards, and I guess they're less likely to have it in hand. Or draw it. Eh, Daybreak Current, it's a pretty good one off the top. We definitely want to slow, bro slow roll this Daybreak, though. Um, the chance of getting 2 for one by Skyclave Apparition or Flicker Wisp is just, like, very, very high. So he turned threes of Vile. Okay, sweet. I'm happy with that. Uh, he should be attacking with Giver of Runes there, I'm pretty sure. I don't think protecting Thali is where he wants to be. It's good that he bricked on land there for us. Alright, so we will Ethereal Armor. Attack, see if we draw a card. Play a second Aura if we draw a land. Pretty good draw engine online now. Two cards down. Alright. Clocked up on Invisible Stalkers. They're not the creature we want to be playing with that one spare mana. Alright. Aether Vial slowly ticking up. Do they hit three mana? They do. Alright. It's going to be a big turn for our opponent. Skyclave Apparition. What do you want? Curious Obsession, Ethereal Armor. Both are good. Has to be curious, right? Yeah. Okay. They're going for the curious. Take two points. Sure. Land, 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 land. Thank you. All right. You go, team. Super aggressive attack for six. One more attack after that will kill him. Uh, there's no real need to uh, daybreak here. It's just way too risky. We do break here, our opponent answers our ethereal armor, and then we, like, never win. Where With this, if they answer our ethereal armor, we can just beat them with Daybreak after that, and it all works out perfect. Quick math. He has both lots of six, but, like, if they destroy ethereal armor, Daybreak falls off, and then we're attacking for three. Two turn kill instead of a... a three turn kill instead of a two turn kill. Now the Skyclave. Alright, well, you got it. Curious Obsession already done its work. A red-white Urian hate bear deck. Sure. Daybreak for the win. Smacking on in there. Alright, game one in the bag. Let's get to sideboarding. Four seems bad. Stub seems bad. Top Rob seems good. 
What, is, what do I think of Trick Bind? Echoing Truth seems good, especially for their... Because um, they're going to have Stoneforge Mystic and Swords Package, right? Pithing Needle can name Sword. It can name Eldrazi Displacer. Um, so they can stop their Flicker Wisp. It can name Aether Vial if they're land short. Seems pretty good. Path is, like, reasonable. Also, Pithing Needle, yeah, name Giver. Uh, enable our paths to hit their creatures. That's pretty nice. Trick Blind is, like, okay, but it's just sort of worse than Torpor Orb, right? Uh, pretty low chance of Spirit Dancer living. I'm actually a little bit scared of lead and Arbiter, to be honest, because... I'm running eight fetch lands in this list, and it's going to be very good against me. My other Bogles list, I run like four to five fetch lands. Has way less of an impact against me. Uh, I don't know what else to cut, man. A land. Pretty heavy on two mana spells. I can't go too light on lands. Maybe three path is enough. Cut a coronet. Uh, so much our best card, though. I cut a stalker. I'll go seven creatures. It's pretty risky, but oh well. So what we're gambling on. Alright, throw this one. Realistically, we've just been mull mulliganing heaps anyway, so let's be real. We're not keeping a 7 ever, apart from that game, I suppose. Alright, we'll keep this one. It's pretty weak, weak to any kind of board interaction, though. Uh, maybe keeping the Stalker is actually a little bit smarter than keeping the Bogle there. No time on play for our opponent. Alright, so against these decks, always use your fetch lands first. Uh, otherwise, lead and Arbiter comes down and gives you a bad time. Bogle down and pass. Ghost Quarter. Stoneforge Mystic. Alright, there he is. Opponent is going for the Batterskull, I'm certain. Yep, Batterskull, there he is. If I path Stoneforge Mystic, it stops my opponent from being able to get Batterskull out. It ramps them, but I think it's worth it. Especially because I went for Batterskull instead of one of the swords. Not the most amazing use of a path ever, but I think it's okay. Magus of the Moon? Oh man, these basics. Go basics. Bastard turned off our Curious Obsession. How dare you? All right, well, we are in a lot of trouble against our opponent if they play Skyclave Evaporation here. Is my opponent considering blocking? Because I will jam this Curious Obsession post-combat if they do. Lightning Bolt face. All right. Yes, Hey Bears plays Paths, so them playing Lightning Bolt in a red-white list is on top of Paths. Makes a reasonable amount of sense. From black and green. Great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I think we lose this one and we need to go to sideboarding again. Get a bit of a look at our opponent's deck, but Skyclave Apparition, I'll concede. Alright, Bone Crusher? Sure. Alright, I'm not going to win from this point. Whatever. Um, we'll just go to sideboarding. It's fine. Like, the percentage chance of me getting out of that is so, so goddamn low. Um, Magus of the Moon. Well, Path to Exile seems even better now. Ah, 
Hardcasting Sword. The fact that he just had the Sword of Feast and Famine in hand is pretty unlucky, like 80 card deck and all. Mm. I think maybe I'll just remove these pithing needles. I think they're a bit cute. Alright, let's get back into it. So now we're like sort of incentivized to fetch basics as well. All right, this hands a cape. I'm gonna ditch the windswept tooth here. I'm gonna basic planes and play around Magus that way. Magus is like turn three as well. Double curious obsession is like super strong. And hold up White Manor and look to path the Magus as well. Instead of wasting it on a uh, Stoneforge Mystic, right? Alright, so I think we just get the other Hallowed Fountain here. We'll be taking a lot of damage, but that's okay. Unless our opponent's running Simeon Spirit Guide, everything I've done is correct. Low-key, like, terrified of Simeon Spirit Guide now. Uh, draw more mana. Sweet. Only Stoneforge Mystic. That's good. Another two card draws uh, with his Bogle after we give it flying. Uh, I think could be getting pretty close to just sealing us this one. Wow, what a draw. I think we hold up path. Arcane Flight's cool and all, but I can't see him chump blocking here. Alright, cool. Good one. Yeah, they got the Batter Skull. I don't know, for some reason this league's feeling already feeling like so much better than the league I played just before. Alright, opponent with all the important decisions in the world. Pretty much all get undermined by Path to Exile. Um, opponent concedes. Alright. We've done enough. They don't want any more in this match. Um... I'm not sure if they, like, knew we had the path there. That was a bit odd. Um, but, yeah, like, we're not guaranteed flying either. They could, like, block with the... Block with the uh, Stoneforge Mystic, via, like, Stoneforge in the Batter Skull, and then they could play a Swords and equip the Swords, and then they have a Pro Greens Batter Skull with Vigilance and all of that. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have the Sword of Feast and Famine in hand. Alright, so we lost the Daryl here. Means we're on the draw. Hand is good. We're going to keep. We can avoid dealing damage to ourselves. We just need to dodge the turn one thought says. Planes? Gear of Runes. Misha's Bobble. Is this a Heliod deck? This has got to be a Heliod deck, right? Oh, wait, never mind. Okay, it's the Hammer Time deck. Boom, Bogle down. What are you going to do, opponent? What are you going to do? So I think our best route is to just race them. Oh, they've got the Ink Moth Nexus. That makes things trickier. Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, that's not too bad. Get 
Getting Colossus Armor, getting something else. Let's see, shall we? Now that I'm not versing up source spells, I can just shrink that one down and have it uh, a more reasonable size. Upsal spells and ad nauseums are the decks you mess up your entire uh, setup for. Is our opponent doing? Surely Hammer. Or right, if they've got the path in hand, they might want to get um, Shadow Spear and look to undermine our Hexproof. Alright, so that's pretty frustrating. They do get the Shadow Spear. I think I got a shock in this uh, Allied Fountain. Give my creature uh, some damage and some unblockable. And probably look for another creature, to be honest. Creature or removal or lifelink. We do not need any more mana. All right, we find more mana anyway, dude. We kept, we kept a freaking uh, a three land hand, right? Was <laughs> it two land hand? That was our turn two, so it would have been a three land hand, and we've drawn two lands, no four land hand. Are oh, we drawing an extra card with Curious Obsession? Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm getting mixed up. Hey, Rutex Gaming, I'm going well, thanks. How are you? How's your day been? Or Rusetic Gaming, sorry if I mispronounced that. Thanks for coming back. Good to have you back here, man. Pretty sure you followed me a little while ago. At least you've been on the stream before. Ink Moth Nexus, active. Colossus Hammer. All right. Opponent is attacking. Wow, this has got to be like some of the worst luck here. This is insane. I guess we thin our library ever so slightly. I haven't drawn a non non land card this game in four draws. And I scryed a land to the bottom as well. Uh, Hyena Umbra. We need something better than Hyena Umbra. We need life gain or something. You doing good? That's good to hear, man. Um, all right, I might as well leave this in hand until next turn. We can't get punished from it. Also, leaving white manners up is good because, you know, it's representing Path to Exile as well. Have you been up to much today, dude? Plays a Horizon Canopy. Do we have a Cycle Horizon Canopy? Tapping planes. Fortunately, it doesn't look like he has Sagata's Aid or Pure Steel Paladin, or else I'd probably just be dead already, so... Also, for those of you that don't know, Colossus Hammer makes the uh, creature lose flying, so the Ink Moth Nexus uh, will be like a 1 1 on the ground, right? Using the Ink Moth Nexus to cycle there, playing Memnite. Okay. We might just have the race here. Play Shadow Spear. Sure. Attack for two. Alright, this is all going well for us at the moment. Another Bogle. We can play this Hyena Umbra post-combat and still kill them. Uh, let's attack, do our scries, make our decisions after that. So obviously that needs to go on the bottom of our library. Go to our damage. Daybreak? It's pretty good. Oh, 
Honestly, not too much today, just chilling. Yeah, that's always good, man. <laughs> I worked earlier on. Uh, obviously, in Australia, it is 9.20 here. If you can probably tell uh, down here in the chat log. Or 9.30 now, actually. Uh, Pure Steel Paladin. Sure. Maybe playing the Daybreak was a bit of an oversight here. Trample lifelink, boo. Yeah, I think if we held off on the Daybreak Coronet, that might have been slightly smarter. We're not dead to this, so we're not going to block it. Opponent all the way back up to 17, yikes. Equips goes across onto the Stoneforge Mystic now. Hmm. Do with another Daybreak, honestly. I think I mismanaged my last Daybreak. Let's attack with this Slippery Bogle. Uh, I'm probably going to put this Hyena Umbra on my other Bogle post-combat. So Daybreak Coronet doesn't fall off. Alright, sweet. That goes on top. I don't think I'm going to get punished here if I play High Number on this Bogle. This one will lose its Totem Armor, lose its Daybreak. Eh, let's play it slightly safer. Ever so slightly safer. Have you been playing much Magic lately? Uh... Rosetic Gaming? If so, uh, what have you been playing? All right, so if he attacks, obviously I'm blocking here. Um, activate Ink Moth Nexus. That's pr fairly smart from him. Pressure us on the other side, life total wise. We're gonna lose like three power here by this Bogle dying. That's pretty annoying. Don't need to block though, or else we just lose. Oh wait, we're gonna lose one power. Sorry. Uh, that's like sort of semi doable, right? Mm. Not really. Uh... You don't actually play Magic Gathering online or Arena, so you haven't been playing paper much because of COVID. Yeah, COVID is uh, a bit of a game changer and not in a good way when it comes to all that stuff. Why didn't I? Why did I gain one life there? Oh, it has trample. Okay, so he netted damage across. Okay, right. I do need to draw another aura here. Core Outfitter. Okay, Core Outfitter is not the biggest issue. What do you have built in paper, man? You feeling the withdrawals at the moment? Of uh, not playing?
I would say I think he's better off uh, equipping the core outfitter here than the Stoneforged Mystic. Oh, his Ornithops is down as well. Took some damage. Then shrunk in toughness. All right, let's sit in the library. Look for some more auras. Look for hopefully some flying this time. Path is huge. Path is absolutely huge. Ah, uh, just attack with the bogle here. Sweet double path. Awesome. Definitely taking that. Elves burns boggles. Oh, that's right. I was talking to you about this before. You've um, you've already told me about all that. Should probably be doing this draw step instead, but we'll just go with this for now. Oh, he's got uh, Giver of Runes, of course. Uh, oh, we got the other path anyway. Oh, wait. Fuck. I need to do that in response, not afterwards. Uh, what do I do? That's so loose. I completely forgot Giver of Runes was there. I can kill Stoneforge Mystic. It's not amazing. I can kill Giver. Let's get rid of Giver. I don't know why he hasn't been giving his creatures protection and just attacking three for the win. I probably should have killed Giver with the first one and then held up on the second one. Alright, I misplayed that really bad. Still shape his gift. That's pretty scary. Another Colossus Hammer. Alright, he's going hard on the damage this time. And drawing a card. Yeah, I haven't actually um, played in paper in probably since like before COVID even happened, to be honest. I played a little bit at the start of the year, maybe in February or something. But uh, I'm just doing all my playing online. Been like very busy with um, Opponent can do 22 Infect. We can block. We just lose both our creatures here. I really wish I didn't misplay that Path to Exile, Path to Giver. Let them untap and then do stuff. Um, it loses Flying, so we can block. Unfortunately, we need to block with both creatures. I don't think Totem Armor is going to work the way that we want it to, though. I think we just uh, get, like, 7 for wand, 8 for wand. Cool. Alright. Lose that one. Kind of still tramples some infect over. Well, that's our own fault for misplaying the paths. I forgot Giver was on the board, so my bad entirely there. Uh... Classic Bogles, yeah, mate. Classic new play there. <laughs> classic blue Bogles. Maybe the classic Bogle player. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what I want to take out. Spirit Dancer isn't... Amazing, because they have paths. He was misplaying too with that giver. Yeah, true. Classic, classic, yeah. <laughs> classic both players playing bad and probably getting salty when they lose.
It's a bit interesting. I'm not even sure what to sideboard out here. I think Pithing Needles paths are really good. Stubborn Denials have their place. Especially countering... I think we probably just want Force over Stubby D. Take out our cores. It's where the sideboarding becomes hard though. We can lose flying, kind of. It's not great though. Alright. So minus out our flying. Why do I have suppression fields? Uh, I don't have suppression fields in this list. You've yet to see blue a uh, blue bogles build, but you like it. Yeah, I think it's pretty sweet, man. Um, preferably I'd have more force, but they're expensive in tickets. And I own them in paper, and I can't justify spending the money for virtual paper. I've just been getting tickets online. Um, but that's likely because I'm a purist. Purist? Purist, okay. Do I have suppression fields? Yeah, no, sorry. I don't have suppression fields in this list. I would see... I can definitely see where that would be good, though. Sometimes I read words funny, so sorry about reading that wrong before. Alright, so we're on the play. Opponent choosing their companion, getting into it. If you want to see the list I've got, you can hit explanation mark deck list, and I think you can get a stream decker up there. Yeah, it'd be really sweet if they printed a blue one mana hexproof creature. Um, I think that would be really powerful. Another thing that's going to help the, this particular color of the deck is when they print the Modern Horizons 2, if they print a blue white Horizons land, just replace four of your fetch lands with that and you've got a pretty good deck at that point. Uh, this is like good, but we need to hit a second mana drop and if we don't, it's pretty bad. But if we do, it's really good. I'm going to risk it, but this is like super risky. I... Wouldn't slam someone for mulling a hand with like this. I, I've lost a lot of games to one landers, and we've got a fair few two mana spells here. It's a classic Vogel kit. Uh, it is, but uh, modern's quick, and if you miss a land drop for like more than one turn on the play, you probably lose. If I get a turn two staggering insight, I'm probably winning. Memnite, all right, he's got he's got all the spells now. Zero mana spells. I wonder if he's packing Welding Jar. It's pretty bad against Path. Curious Obsession. Well, that's a, an aura we can play, right? Let's jam that one. We have to look out for Disenchants uh, with our opponent's deck as well. Oh, he's, he's uh, got green mana in his list. Is that for Cyborg attack? Interesting. I haven't seen a list with green money yet. Brick on lands, classic Vogels. Alright, so give our opponent all the permission. Pure Steel Paladin? Uh, yuck. <laughs> oh, we're not dead? Alright, sweet, sweet. And we draw mana now. Okay, okay. Uh, so just crack this one, get Ethereal Armor, attack. If it comes in natural state, yeah, I'll just try and diversify. I think there's probably something else other than just natural state they're sideboarding for. I'm gonna draw stat path my opponent and path the uh, pure steel paladin here. He hasn't shown uh, the 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 one manner enchantment that makes equipments auto. Uh, attached to creatures. You haven't played competitive modern in a solid year, so you're unsure? Yeah. Stoneforge Mystic. Alright, that's fine. Hopefully he attacks with his Mem Knight so we can get down Daybreak for pretty well free. Shadow Spear? Oh, yikes. We're still getting Path here. Shadow Spear can disable our Hexproof. Um... Right there, active for one. Interesting that he's contemplating not playing it. 
scared of the uh scared of the disenchant effect cigar's aid yeah that's the one man that is the one also gives instant speed casting ooh yeah that's where it gets sketched brings in suppression fields yeah suppression field would be a good card i'm definitely not going to disagree with you there I think we can Staggering Insight here and attack, draw two cards. If we draw land, we can play another Bogle. Is this slow, but they are massive, yeah. We're also like a little bit slow here, but at least we're getting all this card draw. They are definitely massive. Echoing Truth can be pretty timely here as well. Also, our opponent's getting pretty low. If they take this damage, then they can't take many more hits. I mean, Classic Bogles was a slower deck compared to Turbo 1, 2 mana Bogles. Yeah, well, they don't have Hexproof, right? And he shump blocks. I guess he doesn't want me drawing the extra cards. All right, that's probably a fair play from my opponent. Shame I don't have the force in hand. Sigarda's aid as well, yikes. Okay. What else do we have? Colossus Hammer. Opponent can gain their life now. Hmm. You kidding me? Holy shit. All right, GG. That's what I get for tapping out. <laughs> I didn't expect the Stoneforge uh, block there, but uh, I was just assuming I was going to land a hit and get a chance to draw a second mana. So second mana was not on top of our library. All right, I guess just play it a bit slower, just attack. My bad. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Play a Sigarda's Aid and Double Hammer all on, on the critical turn. <laughs> like us hitting Rancor Anka Ethereal Daybreak, yeah. Probably, actually. Mm -mm. Oh, some of our best hands are just like triple Ethereal Armor Rancor and just like curve out with those auras and kill on turn three. It's so rare, though. It's so ridiculously rare. Dang. Alright, so we lost the die roll, so we're on the draw. Stalker hands are always a little bit dicey on the draw, uh, just because it's, like, so slow, but we have double daybreak and ethereal. Uh, we're missing, like, the second white mana source, though. Temple Garden? Oh, please, no Heliod combo. I'm definitely smelling Heliod combo right now. Another deck uh, Suppression Field would be really good against. <laughs> Bant? Oh, it's Spirits. Okay, wait, we can do, we can do this. Uh, I think the library slightly. Just get our basic. We, of course, have to be, like, careful about Skyclave Apparition here, so we're not just jamming Daybreak this turn. We're going to play our other auras out first. They'll probably eat up the Ethereal Armor, and then... Oh, wow, Curious Obsession as well. Dude. So good. All right, no Counterspell by the looks of it, so get in there. Opponent could have spell quelled there. Maybe I should have let on an aura that wasn't Curious Obsession, just because Curious Obsession is like really, really important to resolve against the Skyclave deck. Uh, but I think we're okay. This is much better than that that silly uh, Hammer Time deck. Skyclave, you're taking the Ethereal or the Curious Ethereal. Yeah, that's reasonable. 
Opponent, one mana of Collected Company. Another Skyclave. Glass pull. Okay, Skyclave. My aura is new. A one mana aura would be nice here. So I can protect my daybreaks a little bit. Wow, he takes a flying one? Dude, lucky us. That's pretty fortunate, actually. Let's get white mana. Just a uh, planes here. Equis form here. Daybreak there. Scry. Got the combo online. Yeah, we'll put that on top. Because uh, we can play it this turn, right? Slam it on down. All right. We're on 16. They're on 5. They got to deal with our unblockable and our daybreak. Oh, they can't deal with our unblockable, right? The creature's got it built in. Oh, God, I'm tired. <laughs> All right. So third Skyclave apparition. <laughs> Dude, in this situation, without Curious Obsession, we'd be stuffed. <laughs> Daybreak for the win. Dip. Boom. Go, Tam. Uh, oh, he gets exalted. I was going to be like, I can block that, but yeah. Exalted. Gotcha. Cycle Horizon Canopy. You love to see it. All right. Jam. And hit for lethal. <laughs> With the daybreak. He took Daybreak, yeah. Well, Daybreak was the best card because Invisible Stalk has built-in unblockable. So if he takes the Aquis form, it does nothing. He There's an argument for taking Curious Obsession earlier, but he didn't. Stubborn Denial is probably a little bit better here than Force Negation. They do sometimes bring in counter spells to counter our auras. Definitely Torpor Orb is just like the best card we could have here, though. Flying loses value, but I think three sources is still right because we're going to want to block his creatures. So, like, running into one flying source. Obviously, it's not evasion that's pushing damage, but running into one source. It's not bad. Uh, we're on the draw, so we can minus the land as well. Might minus a hallowed fountain. Actually, a windswept teeth. No. Minus a hallowed fountain. Then, like, an aura. I'll get rid of a Hyena Umbra. Sure, whatever. Although, First Strike is, like, really good in creature matchups. Maybe that's wrong. Uh, what else could I minus? Staggering Insight? Staggering Insight's great. Uh, I'll minus an Arcane Flight then. Alright, whatever. Uh, actually, Echoing Truth is, like, very strong if we bounce multiple things with the same names, but then it's bad. If he has things with other, like with different names, it's bad. And if he gets multiple drug skulls down, it's bad. Can bounce Vile, which might be relevant if he keeps a one lander. Throw this. Opponent keeping seven. Great. All right. Well, yeah, we keep this. Bottom Stalker. Go for it. Look for land. Get this whole engine online again. Might be worth going for Invisible Stalker instead of the Slippery Bogle. If given the chance. Especially, like, just the unblockable is probably going to be quite necessary. Morlon Horn into Vile for my opponent. Alright, uh, well, Curious Obsession. Jam. My opponent with, like, no creature to play. They can't play an instant speed creature here other than, like, a file active. So the worst way they're seeing is a rattle chain. A uh, mausoleum wanderer, sorry. Cycle Horizon Canopy? 
What did he cave? He kept a seven and his best turn two was cycle horizon canopy. Okay. Land. Two. <laughs> Classic burgles. Another eighth of art for my opponent. It's like the slowest spirits deck ever. Don't you want to be like holding up spell queller by now? Finally. All right. So this one we can probably just get white mana. And we'll play Aqueous Form, Ethereal Armor. And then we get like double Ethereal Armor next turn. Smack on through. Uh, yes, I'd like that on top. That's a great card. Rattle Chains in the attack step. Supreme Phantom. Well, we have First Strike and Unblockable, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, get on through. Alright, so this is more like the spirits I know. They have instant speed every spirit now. Cycling another Horizon Canopy? I guess he's got Vile. He could have another land for Hierarch and flash another 2 drop. I think we just win. <laughs> cool. Good card is good. Uh, I think we're a slightly high chance to win here if we're up Path to Exile. Spell Queller. Alright, they can exile it. We'll just path their creature and then recast it. Attack unblockable win. Easy life. Staggering insight was a trap. We saw past that trap. All right, turn four, attack for 17. Good team. <laughs> Good times. What a match that was. That was so textbook. On the die roll. We ain't Osikia. Is this the Monoreto Bosch deck guy? Or is he a Lurus deck guy? I'm thinking... Obosh, Lurus, or Upsal Spells, when I see that name. Alright, so opponents on a Lurus deck. We're going to keep this one. And they're going to keep their seven. We're going to play a Flooded Strand. We're going to pray this thing does not get uh, Thought Seized out of our hand. Another reason why... Ooh. Hammer time? Okay. We might actually be okay against hammer time with this hand. The unblockable... Unblockable is nice. The card draw is, like, okay. But I guess we need to draw some business auras as well. Oh, there's a business aura if I ever uh, called for one, right? A very good aura. Jam it down. Next turn, Curious Obsession plus Daybreak. Or Staggering Insight, hold up Path. Uh, I don't think we get turn two killed here. They need like an extra zero mana creature and a Paradise Mantle for that, right? Maybe I have to hold up path now. <laughs> I 
I think I have to hold up path. Um, I'm gonna play up the staggering insight here. Hope he does not have a second Colossus Hammer. All right, well, if we get to our next turn, we're probably good. Two hammer time decks in one league. Yikes. I haven't seen it in like 20 matches and here we are. All right, you got another hammer. You get the win. Sweet, we take one damage. We're still in the game. Path to Exile OP. Ban path. Calling for the ban path. So God has a jump from like a $3 card to like a dead dollar card in a week as well. I was looking at getting it so I could play the deck and then just not. That and like Vicious Bobble is like super irritating, right? So play a Curious Obsession, play an Arcane Flight, play a Daybreak. Attack for seven, gain some life, draw some cards. Actually, uh, I should have just played the Curious Obsession over the Arcane Flight there. I've got Unblockable built in. I've already played a land for turn, so I can't play another one. All right, sure. Do you have an opponent? Cycle Canopy is is looking for the effect. Oh yeah, all right, we still a game, but uh, there's still difficult times to come here. What did we do last time? So Toprob seems like uh, a little bit greedy to me, obviously. I think we can just cut Arcane Flight. It's good against like the chump blockers, but like if we're blocking their creature, it probably has uh, lost flying, right? Our counter magic is good. Echoing Truth Path and Pithing Needle are good. Alright, we might as well hyena umbra on top of that and we'll run the deck. Could be going slightly light on auras here. Uh creature land and interaction, but no auras, so we can do better. Alright, we'll keep this one. Uh, bottom land and uh, <laughs> yep, all right. <laughs> Misha's bobble. How aggressive is our opponent going to be this this game? Are you going to get the turn two kill? <laughs> Zero mana creature plus Sagata's aid would do it. Uh, so they started with a giver of runes. Hallowed fountain. Shock it in. Play our guy. We're a little bit like weak to disenchant as well, but mile to five, I guess you're going to be weak to any sort of hate, right? Mm -hmm. Peel still paladin. Paradise mantle, draw a card. Okay. Take some damage. I'll take it. Think fetching for an island here is fine. Unblockable, get in form. I am definitely topping that card. I only wish it was in my hand. Uh, <laughs> we're probably dead this turn to uh, Pure Steel Paladin, but uh, they're going to go for it. I, I could slow click through, but there's not much point. If it's just one Colossus Hammer, we might have a chance. Paradise Mantle, Giver of Runes. Attack for 12. Alright, we'll get a 4. 
I like four. Four's still alive. Oh, wait. Wow, 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 wow. Wait a minute. We can't uh, cast Path to Exile and Daybreak Coronet here. Alright, let's attack for one. We need a path. Uh, nothing else would do. That card's great. That can go on top. Dude, that was quite the blunder getting this island. I didn't think about that. Uh, probably combat steps a little bit tighter than uh, draw step, I reckon. Path that paladin. Oh wait, they got giver. Never mind. They had like double giver. I'm never getting past that, right? Oh, this is the second time tonight I've forgotten giver of runes does that. I'm scrubbing out hard tonight. Holy moly. Trickbind's sort of interesting. Split second. Mm, it's just sort of expensive as well. I might try it over Force and Negation. No, over Stubborn Denial. Force of Negation's better against the Garter Zone, which is probably their most explosive hand. Could also look to minus a Staggering Insight for an Aura. Uh, I think we just run it back. This time we have the advantage of being on the play, and the disadvantage of not drawing that extra card, which is probably necessary with how much we mulligan. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the sort of hand I think we keep, but we are in trouble if we don't draw that second mana source. So, if we do draw the second mana source, it's really good. Turn two, good clock, hold up trick bind. So jam out a burgle, pass the turn. Giver of runes, there he is. Land. Not land. Uh, Alright, I think we want to try and cycle our way into land because we don't have the... Uh, try and square our way into land, I should say. Um, we don't have card draw. Alright, sweet. Land on top. So, a little slow, but something. See how good their turn two is. Usually it's pretty good. Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, that's not the worst. Shadow Spear. I think we want to play the Staggering Insight here to draw cards, uh, so we can hold up Trickbind after playing the Ethereal Armor in a future turn. This one can go on the bottom. Draw an Invisible Stalker. Alright, one card deeper than that land we are looking for. So desperately looking for as well. Colossus Hammer. Core Outfitter. Alright. Nifty Trick. Take 11. We do draw land now.
I think we top that, we hold up Trickbine, and we look to play Pithing Needle in a future turn afterwards. All right, split second trick bind. Disable Shadow Sphere for the whole turn. Feels good. Oh, we just take lethal. Hopefully he doesn't see that. Um... Damn, he sees the line. Getting hit for 11 is like a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, that was literally like just missing the land drop for a turn is what lost us that game. If we didn't miss land drop for a turn, we would have been fine. Also, force, man. Punish for keeping the pithing needle. Because I could have forced that instead and then held up path, maybe. Mm. It's not going to quite work, though. I can't really hold up jump blockers there either. Ah, oh, well, GG's. Alright, match five here. Won the die roll, keeping. Got Curious Obsession hand. We've got a Bogle in it. One mana, doesn't matter, let's go. Smash on through. Make it all happen. Huh, wait a minute. Interesting. This is like different dimensions to what it used to be. So it looks all wacky. Alright, let's fix that one up. Opponent has kept a seven. No companions. Seems like companions are creeping back into modern more and more. So a lot of decks that seem to be utilizing them. We can utilize Core Spirit Dancer, it's just so rare that we actually would use it. Blister Coil Rear, so like a mono red blitz here. We draw mana, which is fantastic. Mm, a little bit scared of like mutagenic growth here. I think I want to play either Hyena Umbra or Ethereal Armor. I'm gonna go for the Hyena Umbra just because it's safer with Totem Armor, right? I'd really like to play both Curious Obsessions there and start digging to life gain, but just the risk is too high of mutagenic growth just blowing us out, so we're not going to play into that. Aqueous Warm? Yeah, we already have one of those. The second copy is pretty redundant. It's only where, like, that's why we're only running three, because you don't want to see two of that card. It doesn't add stats. Runaway Steamkin. And then let me untap and do stuff. Now the Blister Coil. Okay. Lava Spike Us. Well, I finally got some use for these Leyline of Sanctities in the sideboard. It's going to be pretty good in a deck that's running so many burn spells, it's running Lava Spike. Life total is low. Life gain? It's not life gain, but it's pretty darn good. Let's play a Curious Obsession Ethereal. Look to draw mana. We should draw mana off of two draw triggers. Unfortunately, we dealt four damage to ourselves here, so we helped our opponent um, a lot. I'm not like super upset if he chump blocks, but it kind of sucks as well. Um, he misses out on a lot of da damage next turn if he chump blocks here. If you see Blood Moon would be bad for us as well, but if he slams Blood Moon, we might be able to just win, maybe. All right, decisions, decisions. Let's see what they do. 
Alright, looks like he has decided not to block. We draw some cards. Great. We can stub in denial, and we have Daybreak next turn. Just need to survive one more turn. Mana Morphos? I don't think so. There is no way I'm giving you that mana. No way you're getting the free price trigger, card draw, mana on the stack. Not happening. Counter that crap. Get it out of here. They lose on tempo now. Um, they get, like Even if they Lava Dart, they shouldn't have enough damage. They get two price triggers. Okay, they have exactly enough damage with Lava Dart. Lava Dart is literally the only card that can win them the game from this spot. Alright, sweet. He's attacking. Nothing before damage. First Lightning. Alright, we're good. We are good. Unblockable for the win. Daybreak for the win. Dude, close game. Real close. Doesn't matter where we put that card because we just win. Go team. Begin sideboarding. Alright, so... As we're saying, Leyline is good, Path is good, our counter magic's probably pretty good too. Got a lot of good cards here. Aqueous Vaughn won us that match, but I don't think it's an aura we want to rely on here. Uh, maybe we can trim, like, some lands that might be painful, so, like, one Hallowed Fountain, and maybe we just do three Path, or maybe we just do three Counter Spells instead of four. We'll leave Force of Negation in, because it's just so powerful being able to cast while being tapped out. Alright, so into this match. Oh, we got the ley line, we got the force, we got the creature, we gotta throw no no land here, no mana. Alright, this one's good. We're gonna keep bottom Arcane Flight. Alright, I feel pretty good about winning this match at the moment. We probably wanna to try to play around Blood Moon a little bit as well. If we can. Visible Stalker is also awkward because if our opponent's like packing the Cosalux Return tack. Um, I guess we Bogle. Um, it, it can get Cosalux Returned, but uh, yeah, Bogle's going to be good here. Take some damage to do it, unfortunately, but the rest of our lands, they're going to fetch basic planes and we'll be fine from that point onwards hopefully take that one juicy point of damage light up the stage i'm guessing they get to untap blister coil weird yep they get mountain and another light up the stage oh man that is such a good roll that is huge. <laughs> Look at that tempo, man. Look at that cut, like raw card advantage there. Lava Dot and Lava Spike. Holy cow. 
Uh, jump block, let high number fall to the bin. Uh, I think we can attack here. And then if we draw for Daybreak, we just pretty much win on Daybreak. And playing the Ethereal Armors here is better for that. Slightly worse against the Board Sweeper though, but... Because they're running Blister Coil weird instead of Swift Spear and... Soul Scour Mage. I think it's slightly less likely. Although they're probably running both, let's be real. Hmm. Breaking on mana sucks, but uh, yeah. Any white mana land for the win, surely. Mono Red Blitz shouldn't be able to beat that. Swift Sphere? Alright, that's pretty good. Opponent bricks on a land as well. Did they keep a one lander? Uh. Taking a lot of damage here though. I'm a little bit surprised he doesn't value Lava Dart over the lava spike there because if he does that he can also sack a land post combat to untap the blister coil weird or like lava dart me during my turn untap blister coil weird chump block and kill my creature um maybe he's thinking about it on raw damage but i think lava dart's just more powerful there see what they do even if they Blood Moon here, we can Hyena Umbra, continue attacking, continue gaining life. Like, we've, we've assembled what we need in this matchup. Uh, points where this might go bad are if they're packing things like Blast Zone, Ratchet Bomb. Like Mahayishi's deck does. Lava Spike us. Alright, damage is... Coming on hard and fast. This is just different wording for prowess, right? Yeah. So blister coil weird is the better block because it has one less toughness, so they can grow it one less time. Another okay, light up the stage now. Uh, I think think that's sufficiently slowed them down enough that we're fine. Really? Well, play around Lava Dart here. It can pump Blister Coil Wid twice. No Lava Darts in the grave. Yeah. Mm. I mean, technically we can block the Swift Spear as well if that's the case. It just doesn't quite feel right. I guess Mutagenic Growth blows us out here. Lightning Bolt. Sure. So there's also the better block because it untaps and then they could potentially block us with it and stop us from attacking them. Creature lives, we kill that creature. Um, ours lives and another daybreak for the win. Opponent can see it's All right, there's the three two guys. Uh, feels good. Getting there. Um, yeah, list wise, I think it's getting pretty close to optimal. The Stubborn Denial, I still think, could be Force of Negation. I did play a league with only Stubborn Denials, and I really didn't like it. I think Force is just that much more powerful. Um, probably, like, my least favorite thing in the deck is the Core Spirit Dancers. I seem to side them out most matchups. Um, that's just how it is. Aura-wise, sometimes Arcane Flight's bad, sometimes it's good. Aqueous Form can be, like, really good or really bad depends on the context of your other auras if it's your only aura it's usually pretty bad if you pair it with your card draw auras it's pretty powerful the unblockable is obviously very powerful as well trickbind 
felt okay. I still think we can find something better than Trick Bind, though, for the sideboard. Maybe it's more counter magic. Um, maybe Delay is just a bit better than Trick Bind. I might run it for another couple of leagues and see if I get a different feeling about it. Uh, Echoing Truth, maybe we could run another one. Uh, it's, it's sort of similar to Disenchant, but maybe we want to hit it more often. Because uh, there's definitely games where hitting Echoing Truth would have been good there. Alright, uh, so that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I'm going to be including my streaming there as well. Thank you, everyone, for watching me live. Um, yeah, other than that, if you enjoyed the video, let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. Um, subscribe if you're new, and uh, ring the bell for more. Thanks, everyone. I will see you all next time. Have a great day.